Welcome to FINA Aquatics World. In this month's program, swimming Grand Prix action from Columbus. We meet German freestyle champion Paul Biederman. And we catch the FINA Diving World Series from Dubai and Beijing. The fourth stop on this year's USA Swimming Grand Prix Series took us to Columbus, Ohio, with a high-profile mix of national and international talent on show, including Michael Phelps looking as impressive as ever in this Olympic year, and in the women's events, Allison Schmidt. All eyes were on Schmidt, one of the big U.S. Olympic hopes, in the first final of the event, the women's 200-meter butterfly. Alison Schmidt in a little bit of trouble now. We know she can finish quick, but she has a lot of room to make up. Susanna Jakepos is quick to surface. She'll hold this lead over the final metres. It will be a comfortable win for the Hungarian. We'll keep an eye on the clock now. Schmidt pushing up further. She'll be lucky to get on the podium here. She's got some stiff competition over the final metres. It is Susanna Jakepos from Hungary taking this out in convincing fashion. Once again, we'll look at the clock here. 2.07, 2.08.09. A good swim from the Hungarian. In the event, it was a disappointment for Schmidt, who had to settle for fourth place. The winner, Hungary Susanna Jakubas, dominated from the start and touched on 2.08.09, the sixth best time in the world this year. On to the men now, and the eternal question, who can stop Michael Phelps? The superstar went into this one as current holder of the meet, American and world records, not to mention the shelf full of Olympic golds. He started here in lane five. Phelps looking very comfortable again. Cream up, starting to push off. He needs a good turn at the wall. We'll see what he can do underwater. Doing the hard yards, Phelps again is quick to surface. He'll take this out with ease. Klima and Hodgson will fight it out for the second and third places, respectively. It will be Phelps for the win. Klima looking safe in, in the second position at the moment. And a great indication of just where Michael Phelps is at in his build-up towards the Olympics in London. A comfortable win for the champion. Klima comes in to touch the tiles in second, and Hodgson will take the bronze. Another magnificent performance by Michael Phelps there, a result that never really looked in any danger with a final time of 155.32. Behind the world record holder was Tom Kramer in second and the bronze went to Dakota Hodgson. In the women's 100 meter backstroke final, Natalie Coughlin would be the one to beat in her signature event. The two-time Olympic champion started in lane number three, looking to defend her meet and American records. A solid push off the wall is required. Coughlin will lead them through. She loses just a bit of ground off the tiles. Ramirez Gonzalez got a great turn. Now she pushes up. Therese Svensson of Sweden also looking to be in on the money. Coughlin will be pushed all the way. You can hear the crowd. They're on the edge of their seats. What looked to be a comfortable win on paper for Coughlin is not turning out to be so in the water. She's in trouble. Ramirez Gonzalez of Mexico, does she have it in her over the final meters? It will come to the touch of the tiles and it is Natalie Coughlin, one minute point eight one. A really close race there, much tighter than many expected, but Coughlin just managed to hold off the challenge of Mexico's Ramirez Gonzalez, with Therese Fenson from Sweden taking the bronze. Meanwhile, in the men's, Matt Grievers has already had a highly impressive start to 2012 and went into this one looking to shake off the challenge of another swimmer who's coming into top form at the right time, David Plummer. Plummer, who holds the meet record in this event, starts in lane four, Grievers in five. As they come towards the turn, Plummer and Grievers, it will be Grievers ahead, he's half a length. We'll see where he surfaces here. He'll use his full distance underwater, coming up just shy of 15 meters, the allowable amount. He'll hold on here. David Plummer, very quick finish. Now we can see the arms going around like a steamboat. 
absolutely pulling hard through the final meters. It will come down again to the touch of the wall. Who can get a full stroke in? It will be Grievers. No, it's Plummer by a fingernail. What a finish. Another tremendous battle between two swimmers at the top of their game at the moment. On this occasion, just four hundredths of a second separated the pair. Grievers had been in the lead for almost the entire race, but Plummer timed his final burst to perfection to snatch the gold. In the women's 400 meter freestyle, Allison Schmidt was looking to add to the gold she picked up in the 200 free, as an expectant crowd prepared for a mouthwatering tussle between her and Jillian Ryan. Well, what a meet for Alison Schmidt. She missed out on the gold in the 200 fly. She's on track to make up for it in the 400 free. She goes around strong, still focusing now on her breathing. A wonderful action. We can see just how much water she's pulling. As we come down towards the end of this race, now fatigue starts to set in. Ryan, how much has she got left in the kick? Alison Schmidt looking very comfortable again still breathing every second or third stroke over the final meters it's Alison Schmidt with the gold as expected it soon developed into a two-horse race between Ryan and Schmidt the latter just held out to take the gold though touching on 408.88 just under one second faster than Ryan the bronze meanwhile went to another American Leah Smith the men's 400 would be another chance to check on the progress of Matt Patton. Patton had retired for a year before resurfacing and looks in good form at this stage of the year. Patton started in lane four. Well, Patton has a strong lead. Verasto will need to finish very quickly now. Doesn't get the best push off the wall. Didn't make up any ground at all, but now he starts to kick. We can see the legs working over time. Matt Patton, meanwhile, meanwhile, looking nice and comfortable. That bent arm action straight as they come along the black line. Working the full body now. A big stretch needed. It will be Matt Patton taking gold. Just a little to the left over the final meters. Verasto of Hungary will take the silver. A good display there from Patton, especially over the final 100 meters when he gradually pulled away from the opposition to finally win by a length with a time of 351.83. The silver went to Hungarian David Verazzo, who also won the 400 meter medley at this meet. On now to the 200 meter breaststroke, the meet record holder in this women's event, Andrea Krop, started here as favorite, having recorded a highly impressive time in the preliminaries. Krop, who came second at the World University Games in this event, starts here in lane four, with the expected competition likely to come from 17-year-old Annie Zhu. What a fantastic race so far from the young Annie Zhu. Really pushing hard now. She has the work to do. Andrea Krop flying towards the finish line. Here she goes. Can Annie Zhu catch up? She has been a fantastic swimmer in the junior circuit. Now graduating to senior level, Miller is there to push her along. Now Miller pushing up inside, closest to the camera. Andrea Krop over the final meters will hold on to this race here, but the real race will be for Silva, Annie Shu and Miller. Who will it be? It is really open at the moment. Andrea Krop will stop the clock in 227.85. It is Annie Shu taking out the silver, and Miller has to settle for bronze. A time of 226.85 there for Krupp in what turned out to be a comfortable victory. It was much tighter for Silver though, Zhu just touching ahead of Myria Miller to grab second place. In the men's race, six-time Olympic medalist Koski Kitayima is another swimmer looking good ahead of the Olympics. The FINA World Silver Medalist in Shanghai 2011 won the 100-meter breaststroke at this meet last year. Kitayima starts in lane four. Well, you can see already just the lead that this young man possesses. Kosuke Kitajima is clearly in a league of his own in this swimming pool here. Molna of Hungary won't catch him. We'll see how he goes at the final turn now. It will be Kosuke leading around the turn. A nice solid push off the wall. He's a little bit slow to surface. He manages to hold that lead ahead of Molna. 
Burkle is pushing up now, looking for a place on the podium, but it will all go to this young Japanese star, the star of the show here. You can hear the crowd really getting behind him now. He has achieved so much in this discipline. We'll keep an eye on the clock. I don't think we're going to see anything brilliant time-wise, but it will be a comfortable win indeed for Kosuke Kitajima of Japan. No contest, really an easy win for Kitajima, touching just a shade over 210 after easing off a bit in the second half. Akos Molnar underlined the strength of the Hungarian team coming in second, while Christopher Berkel took the bronze. The Columbus Grand Prix would prove once again the strength and depth of the American team this Olympic year, as the swimmers ramp up their regimes and look for better times in the run-up to London. Coming up after the break, action from the FINA Medea Diving World Series. The best of the best locked horns in Dubai and Beijing. And we meet freestyle world champion Paul Biederman. Welcome back. In part two of FINA Aquatics World, we see some top-class diving from China. We meet one of Germany's Olympic hopefuls, but first, world-class diving in the desert. A crowd of 2,000 people gathered for the first-ever FINA Medea Diving World Series competition in Dubai. They were treated with the best the world has to offer, particularly from the Chinese team, looking more and more unbeatable with every challenge they face. The first day proved to be a taste of things to come when in the women's three-meter springboard competition, both Wu Ming Sha and He Tsi took center stage. On the day, the biggest threat to the Chinese pair came from Italy in the shape of Tania Cagnato. Cognato in impressive form there, but it was predictably the Chinese who took over. Here is He Tsi's final dive, which looked for the most of the evening as if it would take her to the gold as she led right up until the final dive. But Wu Min Sha showed her composure and experience coming from behind to take the gold. She started slowly with a relatively low scoring dive, which put her in fifth place, but showed her medal by gradually building throughout the competition to take first place with her last dive. She top scored with her second to last dive, collecting 81 points. Wu took gold by the smallest of margins, edging out countrywoman He Tsi by just 0.70 of a point on her last dive, for China to take gold and silver. The Chinese domination would continue in the next event, the men's three-meter springboard synchro final. Chen Kai and Liu Yutong put in an impressive showing, and in only one of the five rounds did they fail to record the best score. Gold there for Chin Kai and Liu Yutong, and in the next final, the women's 10-meter platform synchro, their compatriots and current world champions, Shen Rulin and Wang Hao, once again treated the crowd to a master class. Right from the outset, they led the field with an exemplary display of synchronized diving. A predictable but nevertheless outstanding display there by Shen Rulin and Wang Hao, who shot to the lead in the first round and never once relinquished it. Chi Bo has in recent years often looked as far from his compatriots on the 10-meter platform as Michael Phelps does in the water, with a string of superlative displays already this year. There was a palpable sense of anticipation in the stands as the competition kicked off, not least for the teenage showdown of Chibo and Britain's Tom Daly. As that battle warmed up, the main opposition came in the shape of American David Bodia. Meanwhile, Daly rose to the challenge superbly on the night and suggested that he may be the one to push Chibo the hardest in London.
Daly actually took the lead with his first dive, but as each successive round took place, Chibo simply slipped into gear, getting successfully stronger. Yet again, Chibo produced a master class to underline his prodigious talent in a competition that once again leaves the rest of the world wondering how the Chinese can possibly be stopped. After taking four golds from four finals on the first night, they repeated the feat on the second to complete a clean sweep here in Dubai. German 200 and 400 meter freestyle specialist Paul Biedermann is regarded as one of the best swimmers in the world. Born in Halle in 1986, the impressive German has dominated his favorite disciplines for quite some time now and is always a very difficult opponent to face in the pool. Looking back on how it all started for him as a young kid growing up in Germany, Biedermann explains that it was a family member who convinced him to take up the sport. Actually, my mother told me I should learn swimming. So, and it was really, really young, so I said, okay, I will do this. And um, it just uh, made a lot of fun to me and I enjoy, enjoy it. And it was good for me as a person. So I stick with it and um, yeah, I never had to think about, okay, I want to do something other. It was always swimming I wanted to do. The art of constantly evolving as a swimmer is something Biedemann very much believes in, and there are definitely things he can improve on. The German is also fully aware of his strengths in the water. I think my, my strength is uh, the swimming that I can keep on, even if it's getting hard. But uh, yeah, my weakness is my start and, and, and sometimes the turns. So I really had a bad start and I, if I saw the race afterwards, I always feel like I will stand on the blocks if the others are still in, in the water. <laughs> Biedermann has already competed at the Olympic Games, participating in Beijing 2008. That experience had a positive impact on the German, who is now enthusiastically looking forward to London 2012. The aim this time around, however, to better his results from the last competition. My main aim is um, in 2008 was fifth on the 200 freestyle, so I want to become fifth or better in 200 freestyle. And uh, about the whole games, I expect very well organized and um, maybe some bad weather, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, this whole Olympics in 2008 impressed me so much and I really want to go there. I really want to see this hall again. I really want to meet the people there again. And that is something special for, for me as a sportsman. I really want to do this again. Mm. What would it mean for you to win an Olympic medal? Yeah, I think the best you can achieve as a sportsman. And uh, yeah, of course, all this work and all these things. But Olympic Games are their own competition with its own rules. So um, don't know what will happen there first to qualify and then we will see how good I can perform. Paul Biedermann is at the height of his swimming career and will more than likely win more titles and more accolades. Sooner or later though, a career must come to an end, but according to Biedermann himself, quitting will only be a possibility the day he stops enjoying himself. By the looks of things though, the German isn't about to stop anytime soon. I want to stick with the swimming, I want to, this is still it's fun for me that I enjoy it and uh, this is good for me and um, yeah someday I, I will quit of course but then I will say okay that's all I can achieve now and this is the best and I think uh, with the swimming I can I have the opportunity to so much to see so much to talk to so many people getting so much experience so it's the best for me was the best way to, to swim. After taking all eight medals on offer in the previous event of the World Series in Dubai, the Chinese team were naturally favorites to repeat the feat on home soil in the National Aquatic Center in Beijing, the Water Cube. 
It was a top class turnout for what would once again be a truly unforgettable event. In the opening discipline, Olympic champion He Chong dominated the men's three meter springboard from the start. This was his final dive. A 99.45 for He Chong's last dive would leave him with 548.70 points and a gold medal. His compatriot Chin Kai made it a 1 2 for China, with Mexico's Julian Sanchez grabbing bronze. Meanwhile, another successful Chinese pair, Wun Min Sha and He Tsi, had surprised nobody by sweeping to gold in the previous event in Dubai. And they proved from the outset here that they were in no mood to let their domination slip. Another wonderful display there by Wu Min Sha and He Tsi, sending out a clear message to all competitors that they will have to be in stupendous form this summer to take an Olympic gold ahead of the pair. Meanwhile, the American duo Kelsey Bryant and Abigail Johnson and Canada's Jennifer Abel and Emily Haymans tied for second place on 306.30 points. But the Americans took the edge in the one dive tiebreaker to gain silver. And now on to the men's 10 meter platform synchro, and it was a case of more of the same as Chinese pair Shang Yan Quan and Cao Yuan proved invincible. However, the British team had come into the competition full of hope, and Pete Waterfield and Tom Daly were to prove that the Chinese wouldn't have it all their own way. Daly and Waterfield had come third in this event last year, so it was of great satisfaction for them to go one better this time round with a score of 437.40 points. However, it wasn't enough to unseat Shang Yan Quan and Cao Juan. The Chinese duo racked up 480.18 points to ensure yet another gold medal for the home country. Next up, the women's 10 meter platform, and again, a strong favorite from China, Shen Rulin. Sure enough, a confident Shen Rulin showed nerves of steel to brush aside the best the competition had to offer. Her compatriot Hu Yadan took silver with Malaysia's Renong coming in third. So the end of day one saw a clean sweep for the Chinese, and the next day would have a similar start too in the men's three meter synchro event. Chin Kai and Liu Yutong started as favorites and proved to be value for their billing. Another gold for China there, Chen Kai and Liu Yutong once again, easily beating second place to Ilya Kvashi and Alexei Prigorov of Ukraine. And more of the same too in the women's 10 meter synchro where China's Shen Rulen and Wang Hao dominated from start to finish. The blue ribboned event of the tournament was the men's 10 meter platform. Chi Bo was, for good reason, the overwhelming favorite, but Tom Daly of Great Britain also went into this one in a confident frame of mind, following a strong silver in Dubai and a good display here in the synchro. Daly proved his optimism was not without grounds. In truth, the youngster never looked like unseating the magnificent Chinese, but he left the tournament here with more than just good memories. Not least, his flawless fourth dive. Chi, gold medalist at the 2011 FINA World Championships and 2012 FINA World Cup, said he has had a few injury problems so far this year, despite his spectacular form. He has yet to reach the heights of last year, though, but even when he steps down a gear, it is generally too much for everyone else. <laughs> Chi made a mistake on his fourth dive, which was to bring his overall score down, but a final tally of 566.50 points was still enough to take the gold here. It looks like it will take a big mistake for the master to lose his crown in London this summer, but Daly is looking well equipped to take advantage if such a shock were to happen.
And the same could be said for the whole Chinese team after another event where they recorded a clean sweep of gold medals in front of an adoring home crowd. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll be back in a month's time with more aquatics action. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now.